But that's the game. That's the game. The media would be trying to trick everyone, distract you with bullshit. Look at this. Right now, there's a war in Iraq. There's a war in Afghanistan still. There's a genocide in Sudan. And everybody in the country is looking for the missing white girl in Aruba. And I feel bad for her family, but she's not the top story. There are, right now as we speak, hundreds if not thousands of missing black children that don't even get any media mention. As a matter of fact, you are looking at the first nigga that America has ever looked for. I'm the first missing black person America has ever looked for. Is anybody in here gay? <laughs> get her! Let's get her. I'm totally joking. This is New York. Yeah, are you gay for real? Yeah. Okay, so you know that gay marriage is illegal, right? Why do you think that that's illegal? They wouldn't have kids and get married. They're going to wake up to the reality of problems of marriage just like everybody else. <laughs> and, it's, and it's all good and well. You see, here's the thing. No matter what your morality is, it's still a secular society. So even if gay marriage is against my own personal beliefs, I can't necessarily believe a government that would say we don't want to do that for moral purposes. Not while you fucking bombing Iraq like that or sending motherfuckers to Afghanistan like that. I mean, this, you can't be hitting me with all this dubious ass morality. They say morality because that's what their constituents need to hear and because they think that's what their constituents want to hear. But honestly, Bill Clinton said 90% of the shit that people talk about has nothing to do with what the actual job of the president is about. <clears throat> you think the president be sitting around, what time is it, 10 o'clock? Oh, we got that gay meeting. Hey, guys, what are we going to do about that? I mean, they don't give a fuck about it. Who actually is going to give a fuck? <laughs> Big business. And I have a whole belief system about that. You just don't want to know. <laughs> I'll tell you part of it. <laughs> All right, uh, it's a tier, it's a tier. Listen, marriage laws are fucked up in America. I don't think that the government should have that much say in actually how people devise a marriage because a marriage, right, devoid of any kind of religious belief or emotion like love is a business contract, period and simple. And tons of people in Washington or legislative bodies, even guys like Elliot Spitzer that have wives or fuck prostitutes, <laughs> live in loveless marriages. And they have these shits arranged because they're in such a high social stratosphere that they have to keep up a certain appearance. So why are they imprisoned by their own marriage? It's this form of economic slavery. And if you look at the way this shit happens, corporations were made legal in, in the United States by the 14th Amendment, right? Or the 15th Amendment, which freed the slaves. And then under those rights, people said, we want the same rights as those motherfuckers as collective individuals, right? And if a collective individual and two collective individuals want to do business with one another, one's masculine, one is feminine, so they define a marriage institution between man and woman. But what if corporations is gay? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what if Aunt Jemima doesn't want to be with Uncle Ben? What if Aunt Jemima wants to do business with Sarah Lee? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> what if Uncle Ben wants to do business with Mr. Clean? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know what's funny about being in San Francisco? First of all, the city's not even gay anymore. Gay people can't afford to live there. They just visit. Gay people got their money tied up in other shenanigans. <laughs> Don't you remember San Francisco where that motherfucking tiger jumped out of the cage and bit those people up? And San Francisco is so gay, the whole city blamed the tiger. No, they blamed the victims. They didn't even say shit about the tiger. They said, these people were teasing that tiger. That's irrelevant. <laughs> tiger should not be able to jump out of the cage and kill people at the zoo. They said that that tiger chased one of his victims 400 yards. Listen, 
You know how fucking fast you have to run? To outrun a tiger for 400 yards? He probably woke up in the hospital with an NFL recruiter standing over his bed. You did good, son. You did very good. I know this isn't a good time, but I'm with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Complete coincidence. I think we can tie something in, do something really big with you. One of the guys the tiger bit was Mexican, and the other two were Arabs. I said, what a, who trained this tiger? Homeland Security, like everybody? <laughs> Have you ever worked all your life for something and have it not work out? That happened to me. It was tough. Think about it. I was gone for 12 years. This is not a little bit of time. It was hell. I watched other niggas that I knew become very famous. I watched the world go on without me. I mourned the loss of it. And after a while, I didn't care. Coming back was terrifying. I understand what I am. I really do, more than anybody. Like when they write about me in history, I'll, I'll be dead reading it like, yeah, I know they'd say that. <laughs> I swear to God, this might be the noblest of professions. Robin Williams had a bar that I loved. He said, comedy is the only job you can have where you can use everything you know. And that's true. You can use more than you know. You can use what you think. Use it. Don't be afraid. Don't let these bitch ass niggas button your lip. <laughs> Say it anyway. Mom, 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 mom. You have no idea what I put this woman through. <laughs> if you had just given birth to me, that would have been more than enough. But the fact that she raised me and raised me well, we had a real oral tradition in our house. I knew the word griot when I was a little boy. A griot was a person in Africa who was charged with keeping the stories of the village. Everyone would tell a griot the stories and they would remember them all so that they could tell future generations. And when they got old, they'd tell them to someone else. And they say in Africa, when a griot dies, it's like a library was burnt down. And my mother used to tell me, before I ever thought about doing comedy, she said, you should be a griot. And she'd fill me with every story of black life. You know, she's educated in African-American studies. And she would let me understand the context that I was being raised in. That I'm being raised in a hostile environment that I have to tame. By the time I was 14 years old, I was in nightclubs, mastering an adult world. It was terrifying. The crack epidemic was going on, and my mother would hear gunshots outside and be scared to death. Maybe it's my son. But early in my career, if you remember, Mom, you used to sit in the club with me. She'd do a full day of work. You'd be back there falling asleep, just waiting for me to go on. She would watch my show every night. Do you know how long that car ride is home? How many of you have ever heard your mother say, pussy jokes were a little too much tonight, son? <laughs> I was a soft kid. I was sensitive, I'd cry easy, and I would be scared to fist fight. And my mother used to tell me this thing, I don't even know if you remember, but you said this to me more than once. You said, son, sometimes you have to be a lion so you can be the lamb you really are. Remember that for the first time in the history of America, the life expectancy of white people is dropping because of heroin, because of suicide. All these white people out there that feel that anguish. The hustle and grind, I carve my path. Each step forward in aftermath. Dreams pulsate within, fueling my fire. With determination ablaze, I never tire. Day by day, I chase the gleam. In the labyrinth of life, I crack my scheme. I'll nurture my aspirations, let them thrive. In the symphony of ambition, I'll strive. Rise up and showcase your might. Show them what you want. They say us take flight. We'll scale the peaks, reach the zenith's height. Together we'll ascend, never falter, never slight. 
in the face of adversity we stand tall with grit and valor we heed the call no setback too great no hurdle too steep we're the architects of our destiny the dreamers who leave so let's rise let's soar let's defy the limits imposed reach for the sky with unity as our strength and courage as our guide we'll conquer the horizon side by side they're mad because they think nobody cares maybe they don't let me tell you something i know how that feels if you're a police officer and every time you put your uniform on you feel like you got a target on your back you're appalled by the ingratitude that people have when you would risk your life to save them oh man believe me believe me i know how that feels everyone knows how that feels but here's the difference between me and you you guys hate each other for that and i don't hate anybody i just hate that feeling that's what I fight through. That's what I suggest you fight through. You gotta find a way to live your life. You gotta find a way to find joy in your existence in spite of that feeling. And if you can't do that, come get these nigga lessons. Thank you very much.